What would happen if you took the blood from long COVID patients and injected it into some poor, unsuspecting mice? Now, I bet that's not a question that you think about every day of the week, but a team in the Netherlands recently did just that. And would you believe they actually managed to induce various symptoms of long COVID just from doing so? In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down this really interesting research and thinking about what it tells us about long COVID, closely related ME-CFS, and whether this line of research could actually help with developing very targeted treatments in the future. My name is Patrick Usher. I'm an ME-CFS patient and author of the book Understanding ME-CFS and Strategies for Healing. And today I am talking about a paper that was given by Jeroen den Dunnen, a Dutch researcher at the recent international ME-CFS conference held at the Charité University in Berlin. Now, Jeroen's presentation was called Autoimmunity as a Cause of Long Covid and ME-CFS. And that's not to say, as Jeroen himself pointed out in his presentation, that he was saying it was the cause, but rather one factor among many. Others include microclots, gut dysfunction, mitochondrial and cellular issues, low blood volume, uh, vascular problems, and so on and so forth. And ultimately, all of these actually interrelate in one big vicious cycle. Nevertheless, autoimmunity is an important component for at least some patients. And we know that because previous studies have shown that autoantibody levels tend to correlate with symptom severity in ME-CFS, and that removing autoantibodies using procedures like immunoabsorption actually can lead to a significant reduction in symptoms, sometimes a dramatic reduction in symptoms, at least for some patients. But these kinds of mice studies can actually allow us to get an even clearer idea of what's going on with the autoimmune problems in ME-CFS. After all, if you actually take the blood from a sick person and put it into a healthy mouse and then the mouse sort of starts to display certain symptoms, you actually learn a lot about what is going on in the disease in question. And so this is what this research team did. They took 34 long COVID patients, they actually took blood samples and then they purified that blood down to just the immunoglobulins, that is to say the immune complex which actually contains the autoantibodies, and then they injected that purified blood into the mice and observed what happened. To be more precise, they actually subdivided the long COVID patients into three subgroups. One was those which showed damage specifically to the brain. The other was a group that showed muscle damage. And the third was a group which had issues with excessive cytokines and a kind of uh, inflamed immune system. And I should say that actually all three groups had that problem with the immune system. Uh, but the first two uh, showed respectively some damage in the brain or damage in the muscles. So blood from all of these subgroups was then injected into the mice and the researchers observed what happened. And I bet you're wondering, did the mice continue with their energetic ancestral cheese hunting ways or did they suddenly find themselves absolutely exhausted and hardly able to move? Well, the results were interesting and they actually used a whole range of tests in order to uh, see how the mice responded. But Jerome picked out two in particular as being especially important. One looked at what happened to the general mice activity levels in their kind of open pen or open box when they were injected with the blood. And what they found very interestingly is that the mice who were injected with the blood from the muscle tissue damaged subgroup, their activity plummeted dramatically. And you can see that right now in the graph, that's the grey line, that as soon as the blood was injected, their activity just shot right down. Over the coming days, it did recover, and that's what you would expect because it's quite a dynamic effect and would not last forever. But basically, in comparison to the other groups, there was this dramatic reduction in activity. They then used a different test called the von Frey test, which is where you actually attach a piece of string to the, to the mouse's paw. So it's got a little piece of string there. And that piece of string is kind of goes down under the cage. And then you can kind of pull it a little bit and see how the mouse reacts to that stimulation on the paw. The idea being that the more kind of uh, pain the mouse might feel, the greater their reaction would be to that slight stimulus. And so what was actually found in this case that in all of the groups, there was a significant increase in pain as a result of putting in the, 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 the human IgG, the cytokine problems alone, and also the group with the neuronal. So these kinds of findings are really interesting. They show the biomedical nature of long COVID and the closely related ME-CFS. And I should say that this research group is currently 
working on a study to do the same from MECFS blood, and I'm sure the results will be very similar. Um, but, you know, it shows the biomedical nature of the disease. It shows that these problems are not psychosomatic and that there's something, you know, not for every patient, but in many patients, which is important for producing symptoms simply from this autoimmune aspect. Now, the researchers did not stop there with these behavioural experiments. Once the tests were done and the mice were sadly uh, no more, uh, they actually took the tissue from the brains of the mice and exposed that tissue to again, this blood containing the IgG. And what they observed was that in a significant number of cases, that tissue started to show signs of staining or autoreactivity. And so in this way, they were actually giving us at least one basis for the kind of neuronal damage that they observed in one of the subgroups. This video is sponsored by Turney, a very exciting new artificial intelligence platform, which has been designed for a small selection of illnesses, including ME-CFS and long COVID. Now, Turney has several features, but one of them is to give you a weekly update. So you actually input your situation. Uh, you can put in your test results. You can put in as much detail about your symptoms and the kinds of things that you are interested in following. And every week, Turney will actually scan the web for maybe a thousand different new data points in relation to your condition. Uh, and that includes papers, conferences, uh, transcripts of podcasts and YouTube videos, patient discussions on open forums, and it will actually send you then about 12 to 15 data points that it believes is most relevant to your situation. So for example, if you're interested in this kind of research into autoimmunity or treatments that might be coming up based on it, you could actually tell Turney that and it would keep you updated on any developments in this particular area. Now Turney is free for the first three weeks and then it's $2 a week thereafter, but you can get an extra 10% off if you use the code PATRICK10. Please check out the links down below to sign up. They then went further, uh, this time not with mice, but this is another study that they're kind of uh, engaged in. Uh, they actually cultured muscle tissue in a laboratory setting, in an in vitro setting, and they then exposed that muscle tissue to, again, the uh, blood from the long COVID patients, or more specifically, a kind of infusion of which 5% uh, was the isolated immunoglobulins. And this was a very interesting thing to do because we know from the work of Rob Woost and his lab that during post-exertional malaise, there's actually muscle tissue necrosis that occurs. That is to say that the mechanisms of PEM actually create muscle tissue death. And so it'd be very interesting to see if there's something about the autoantibodies in and of themselves, never mind about the you know, conditions of PEM, but something about the autoantibodies which could actually push uh, or create the conditions within muscle tissue that actually caused it to die. And so they, they did that experiment and what they basically found was that in some cases there was indeed uh, subtle signs of tissue necrosis simply from the tissue being infused with autoantibodies, but in some cases the tissue death was so profound that in fact 80% of the muscle tissue died. Obviously, again, this shows the clear importance of autoimmunity in long COVID and closely related ME-CFS, that it causes symptoms related to nervous system dysfunction, brain dysfunction, and uh, the exercise intolerance that goes on in the muscles. But I think that, uh, and as Jerome alluded to, there's some really exciting potential here. One is that this kind of work could actually massively speed up research, because what Jerome wants to do is actually to, once this IgG is isolated, he wants to then in a laboratory setting actually replicate the IgG, so that you wouldn't need to keep taking fresh patient samples, but you'd actually have a kind of uh, formula, as it were, that could be replicated at will, and then used by research groups, which would be much more time and cost effective. So in this way, this kind of approach could actually speed things up. The second, I think, exciting thing about it is, is that you know, his work in identifying different phenotypes relating to the autoimmune problems could actually allow for a future, you know, an ideal future, where the MECFS or long COVID patient goes to their doctor and the doctor says, okay, I'm going to take a blood sample and we're going to actually see which phenotype uh, you have, uh, then that's going to allow for more targeted treatments. Because one thing that you could do with in vitro studies like this, you could actually induce the damaged tissue and the damaged tissue would be a bit different depending on which subgroup. And then you could use drugs to target that particular problem in each case. So that when a patient does present and actually is identified as belonging to a specific phenotype, you could then say, this is the drug for you. So I think there's a lot of, you know, exciting kinds of ways in which this research 
could help move the field forward. So that's it for this video. Please leave your thoughts and comments down below. I'd be very interested to see what you think of this one. Um, please consider checking out my growing Patreon and Discord community. It's just $7 a month. We have once a month Zoom calls where we support each other talking about uh, treatments that we're trying. And we also have a private forum on Discord and you can submit questions for myself, for Q&A videos and also for upcoming speakers. So please check that out and otherwise see you in the next video.